Praise the Lord. I am honored to meet you all through this ministry, New Life in Jesus, broadcasted by Emmanuel Christian Broadcasting Network. I'm really, really honored to, um, to speak with you today, wherever you are, in any country, in any continent, I believe that this is the appointed time of the Lord. Let me first introduce myself. I am Bishop Ernest Philip Irungu, the General Overseer of Vision Gospel Ministries International, based in London, United Kingdom. And today, um, by the grace of God, it's a new chapter for both of us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for this opportunity that you have given to me, Father, my God, to speak to your people, wherever they are, in this continent of Europe, or in Asia, or in Middle East. Father, my God, I'm really glad to be here to do your will, Father, as I'm here to represent you. And I don't need to worry, Father, my God, of what to do, of what to say, because, Father, my God, you are speaking through me through this moment. Holy Spirit of God, my Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much for standing with me and to go with me wherever I go. Father, my God, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And before I speak to you what the Holy Spirit of God has directed me to impart to you today, I am going to pray for you today. Wherever you are, the person that you are looking at me through this television, get yourself prepared because the prayers, the prayer I'm going to pray for you today, the prayer I'm going to offer for you today, this prayer will transform your life forever. Now let us pray. Father my God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I lift up that person who is looking at me today. I lift him, my Father, my God, and I stand before, Father, my God, your throne of judgment. And I pray, Father, my God, to be allowed to enter into your presence with my dear one, Father, my God. Thank you for allowing me, Father, my God, to enter into your divine presence before your throne of judgment, Father my God. As I make him stand before you, Father my God, likewise, Father my God, at this very moment, I pray, Father my God, the accuser, who is Satan, to be brought to stand before your throne of judgment, Father my God. The accuser who accuses him day and night. And any other accuser, Father my God, to be brought to stand before your throne of judgment this very moment. Father my God, likewise, Father, I call the witnesses to witness this trial, Father my God. I call upon the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, 
and our intercessor who testifies for us, Father, before your throne. Likewise, Father, my God, I call upon the angels of God that witness everything happening in life, Father. Also, Father, my God, let the saints in heaven also come to stand before to testify, Father, my God, against Satan and his host. My Father, look upon your child, your son, Father, the one that you, are, you had created by your image, Father, my God. And now, Father, my God, I stand as your priest, as the one that speaks on his behalf, my Father, as I also, Father, my God, ask for forgiveness on behalf of your, of your Son, on behalf of your child, Father, my God, praying for your divine forgiveness upon him or her. Father, my God, forgive him. In case, Father, my God, he has done anything, he has said anything, Father, my God, forgive him. I pray for your divine forgiveness, Father, my God, as I repent, Father, my God, on his behalf. I'm so sorry, Father, my God, and I also pray, Father, my God, for this forgiveness to cover him from this moment up to the time of Adam, Father, my God. I repent for the sins that he knows and the one that he does not know. I repent for the sins of his generations up to the time of Adam, Father, my God. By the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed at Calvary, Father, my God, his sins were forgiven, Father. Every accusation, Father, my God, against him. Oh, Father, my God, every written accusation upon your son or your child, Father, my God, has been dealt with at the cross of Jesus Christ, whereby all their legal demands, Father, my God, has been made. Now, Father, my God, your son stand before you today as white as snow because, Father, my God, he has been forgiven. And the accuser, Satan and his host, they have got nothing, Father, my God, to say. They have got nothing to claim about. Father, my God, now they are, he is standing before you as white as snow, because, Father, my God, he has been forgiven, and he is now holy, and he remained the way how, Father, my God, you had created him. Now he is entitled, Father, my God, to receive every kind of spiritual and physical blessings upon his life. Today, Father, my God, I am praying now that every curse upon his life Every torment, Father, my God, upon his life. Father, my God, to be annulled by your divine decree. Based on this reason, Father, my God, that I state before you, Father, my God. You brought him, Father, my God, to this world. To fulfill your purposes, Father, my God. Now Satan and his, his host, they have been fighting him day and night causing diseases, sickness, calamities, accidents, and all other form of misfortune upon your son or your child father. And by doing so, Father, my God, Satan and the host, and his host, are not only destroying him, Father, my God, but they are destroying the purposes, Father, your purposes that you wanted to fulfill through this Holy One, Father. So for the sake of protecting your purposes upon the face of the earth, Father my God, let, Father my God, I pray you declare a divine judgment upon Satan and the host. 
so that they cannot touch him any longer from today. Second Father, my God, he has been called by your name. He is identified, Father, my God, by your name. And by Satan and his host attacking him, Father, they want to put your name into jeopardy. Father, my God, for the sake of your name, for the purpose of protecting, you, protecting your integrity, Father, my God, allow not your name to be laughed at. For that reason, Father, my God, I pray for you today, your son, your son, your child to be set free and set an hand upon his life, upon his family, upon his business, Father, my God, to be withdrawn by your holy and divine decree. Likewise, Father, my God, I pray, remember your covenant, the covenant, Father, my God, that he has entered with you through our Lord Jesus Christ. And now is entitled to full protection, Father. Now today I pray, Father, my God, that you create a hedge of defense all around him and his family and the works of his hand. Also, Father, my God, I also pray, Father, my God, this very moment for your holy decree, to allow me, Father, my God, to rebuke the enemy under your divine decree, Father, my God. So today I thank you, Father, my God, as also you listen to the voice of witnesses that are standing before your throne this very moment. The voice of my Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, our intercessor. The voice of the angels of God. Father, my God, that testify on behalf of your son and of your child. I thank you, Father, for your divine decree. Thank you, Father, my God, for your just judgment upon him. I thank you, Father, my God, because now your son and your child is free. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father, I now rebuke every kind of demonic spirit. I rebuke you, Satan, from his life. You have got no father authority upon him. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father, my God, I declare you to be healed just now wherever you are. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I rebuke that sickness to go. I rebuke every kind of problems in your life to go now. You are now free as I call forth the angels of God to surround you and to protect you day and night based on the decree of God. Father, my God, I thank you for everything. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That has been great, people of God. And now I think for the few minutes that I have, I am going to preach to you what the Holy Spirit has put in my heart today. And the short message for today is, be strong in the Lord. And uh, I'm going to read from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. Ephesians, chapter 6, from verse um, 10 and forward. Here the Bible says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his mighty, both on the arm of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of this present age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore take the all arm of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done so to stand, stand therefore, having greeted your loins with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having showed your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace, besides all, taking the shield of faith, 
which you may quench all the flaming dart of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray all the times in the spirit with prayers of supplication. Praise the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his mighty. However, how are you going to be strong in the Lord? Today, God has set you free. The prayers that you have made today was a unique one. And now there is a clean slate before you. However, you need divine wisdom. You need divine understanding to know that you are surrounded by the evil ones. Thrones. Principalities. Powers of darkness of every kind. God and the goddesses. And the other spiritual entities. That has been wrecking. That has been destroying your life. And the Holy Spirit today. He is going to impart some knowledge and understanding in you so that you can be able to position yourself in a such a way that you can facilitate God's protection to be upon your life. And the first of all, but not the least, You must be holy. You must be holy at every level. And today, I'm going to, the Holy Spirit is going to open your eye to understand holiness in a different way. First of all, you must be able to understand. There is no level of holiness which covers mostly the issues which are associated with the bodily forms. And this to some extent, most of you have been striving and by the grace of God, you have been able to succeed at a certain level. And this form of holiness, yes, has facilitated you to have some form of peace in your life. You have abstained from drunkenness. You have abstained from the pleasures of this life. You abide by the moral codes either of your church or society. But my dear brothers as I refer everybody as a brother I refer everybody as the son of God because we are spirits we are not bodies and God has got no gender and the spirits have got no gender. God has got only sons. Also, this high level of holiness, which is much more spiritual. And I'm going to elaborate further. What do I mean by these two levels? Just hold on tight. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. As the Bible clearly says sin came into this world because of one man. 
Because of one man's transgression, sin has come to the entire world and everybody is born a sinner. Why are we sin as sinners? People are sin as sinners because they have fallen short of the glory of God. According to Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. Here I'm going to read for you to see what I see. So that you can see what you do not see. Romans 23 and verse 23. For there is no distinction. Things all have sinned have fallen short of the glory of God. And now, what is this glory of God which has made us sinners and to stand worthy before the presence of God? Romans also 5 and verse 12. Here the Bible continues to teach us. Romans 5 and verse 12. Therefore, our sin came into the world through one man. And the death through sin. And death spread to all men. Because all men have sinned. Indeed, sin was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not counted where there is no law. If the law does not die, do not covet. If the law did not say that, do not covet then coveters, there were no guilt because there was no law that said that do not covet. However, the Bible continued to emphasize to us that sin was there even before the law. Now, for the lack of time, I'm not going to let me cut short and go straight to the point. What was Adam's sin? What did Adam do? Adam disobeyed the voice of God. And he separated himself from God. And when he sinned, let us now see how did that sin manifest. When Adam sinned and when God approached him, Adam decided to go and hide somewhere in bushes. He was afraid with God. He feared God. And God said, Adam, where are you? And I say, Adam said, I am afraid. I am afraid because I am also naked. What is nakedness? Spiritually, nakedness means lack of love. How does sin manifest? Sin, which is equally death, manifest as fear. Listen to me, sons of God. Sin manifests as anger. Sin manifests as bitterness. Sin manifests as malice, jealous, resentment, guilt, shame, worry, sadness, and other negative emotions. If I ask you today, what are the attributes of Satan? Come on, people of God. 
That makes Satan to be who he is. Is it not fear, anger, jealous, resentment, unforgiveness? Those are the attributes of Satan, which also means death. I wish I had more time. But by God's grace, next moment, next month, you are going to hear my voice again, and I'm going to expand more on this area. Today was just an introduction to make you think. Do most of you realize that those are the things that have separated you with God? How does holiness manifest? Holiness and God's glory. How do they manifest in your life? Holiness manifest as love joy peace compassion kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control according to galatians chapter 6 and verse 22 and those are the attributes of god that make god to be who he is Now, my dear brothers, the sons of the Most High God, God measures success in your life based on the level of the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit in your life. That is the bank benchmark. That is the benchmark which God uses to measure success in your life. And when your life is imbued with these attributes of God, you will be shining like light itself. And that one forms protection around you. And the enemy can come to you and they can see nothing against you. Like when Jesus stood there and he said, the enemy comes after me, but he has got nothing against me. Next time, I'll take time to expand from this point. I wish by good grace I had at least 40 minutes. I could have some, we could have done something greater. But since our time is limited, let me just pray for you the last prayer. Father, my God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for the Holy Spirit who is our teacher. Father, my God, now I surrender their future. I surrender their life, Father, my God, in your hands. Praying that, Father, my God, your Holy Spirit, to continue to teach them every single moment, Father, my God, in their life. Even when they'll be going to sleep, Father, my God, as they are resting, Father, my God, in their beds, Father. Deal with them, Father, my God, spiritually. Father, my God, I say thank you as I summon the angels of God to protect them day and night. Thank you, Father, my God. In Jesus' name I pray. Saints of God, meet you again next month. God be with you. God bless you.